Happy Wednesday, readers. Today for our reading workshop, you should have began by watching the flow vocabulary video on setting. Make sure that you have watched the entire video before coming over to complete our reading lesson together. After we're done, you will have chapters from our new story that we're using during reading lessons called The Tiger Rising, chapters one through three to listen to because you're going to use the information found in those chapters to complete your class work today. So you are not going to Epic to read independent books. It will be used only by listening to the story. There is also a PDF or a digital copy of the book that is attached to the bottom of this lesson. For our lesson today, you're going to need some crayons. The story, The Tiger Rising, I have the actual novel, but you have the digital copy attached to this lesson, like I just said. Your reading notebook, your green resource folder that's inside of your anchor binder, highlighters, pencil, and glue stick, and your Tiger Rising packet. This was in the work that you picked up during your second supply pickup um, just a couple weeks ago. So make sure that you take that out. As we get started, go ahead and open up your green resource folder that's inside of your anchor binder. We are going to be looking on the left side and taking out the teach page that says setting. That is the only page that we're going to take out today. The rest of the green folder can be um, put in your anchor binder and then placed back in your basket. As we said, we're going to be starting our new unit, Unit 3. Yesterday, you should have taken your Unit 2 Reading Strategies test, so we're now moving on. So we're going to go back to our last Reading Strategy lesson, which was on inferring. So we're going to find the page number that was for that Reading Strategy, and we had quite a few teach pages, so we were on page 34. So I'm going to flip through all of the inferring teach pages, and the next available page that is not used by inferring is going to be page 35. So we're going to then flip back to the table of contents to record in there our new unit. So on page 35, we're going to talk about characters and interpreting characters. So I'm going to just put unit 3. So this is a reminder that we've moved on from reading strategies. And because we're talking about this unit in interpreting characters, we're going to be focusing today on why the setting is going to be so important for us. So put today's date, which is 9-16-20. Once you're done with your table of contents, remember you can go ahead and turn back. At any point in the video, you can pause to make sure that you're caught up and organized, and then you can push play. We're gonna take our um, teach page, flip it over, Use your glue stick, and just like always, make the frame on the outside, make the X through the middle, and smooth it out. And then you can put your glue stick away for now. So we're gonna go ahead and use our highlighter, and we're gonna highlight the top. And you can just go ahead and do that quickly, make it look nice and neat. So the word setting is gonna kind of pop. We wanna make sure that it's catching our eye visually. It will be a good idea as well because we're moving on to a new section for you to put on the top that this is considered unit three. Just so you can keep yourself organized and know what section we're going to be talking about and when it comes to our unit three assessment when we're done, you're gonna know where to go back to to review those teach pages. So today we're gonna to be focusing on setting and how this is an important um, story element within fiction texts, fiction novels and um, books that we're reading. So when we think about setting and we're going to talk about how the author uses it to affect the story, um, what happens in the story, how our characters are feeling and react to one another, the author is using this as another layer of um, creativity to add some more dimensions to what we're reading now as more advanced readers. So we're going to be reading this story called The Tiger Rising. And in just a moment, I'm going to read just the first two pages for us to focus on. So when we look at this, we're going to be focusing on some very specific information today as we finish up our classwork and when you continue on with your independent um, work that you're doing on your own. So we're gonna look at our settings page 
And it says, and it's an element of fiction that tells when and where the story takes place. And you should be able to review that. This is something that you probably talked about since way back in kindergarten, always talking about the when a story is taking place and where the story takes place. We're also going to then continue to say the author is providing a setting to set the mood and what we call the tone. So I'm gonna highlight those two new words. These are words that might be new to you. And the author definitely um, sets the tone and the mood by where the story is taking place and um, how they describe that. And we're able to have that description because they're invoking all of our senses. So I'm gonna use my highlighter and just remind myself that I'm using my senses when I'm being told the way something looks or sounds that they're hearing or the way that something um, feels if they touch it. We need to make sure that we remember all the senses to be able to look out for that when the author provides that in our text. The next part is when we talk about tone, tone means the author's feelings toward a subject. So if it's something that they're really excited about, you're gonna see that they're using more positive language. If it's something that maybe they're scared of or um, maybe they're afraid of and you know they're not really a fan of or even if they're sad about something, their language or their word choice is going to change to reflect their personal feelings about that within the text. So we have some examples here of some ways that we can describe the author's tone by the word choices that they have. So we could say the author's tone could be considered angry or serious, playful, or optimistic. And we know optimistic as one of our growth mindset stances we talked about at the beginning of the school year. And then we said that this helps the reader, and this should say reader or not read, so add ER, reader visualize the atmosphere. And we know that that word Visualize is one of our reading strategies that we talked about. So this is what can we picture? We said that this could even be a movie in our mind that is being created by the way the author is describing something. And we're going to be looking at how are my characters reacting to the setting? So is it changing the way that they interact with one another or maybe what they do um, when they're alone? We're gonna have to pay close attention to our reactions from our characters. So the chart that you're gonna be filling out today um, during your classwork is this chart that splits the information into four sections. So we're going to be looking at text evidence, which we consider to be the author's words. You are going to tell me what you visualize with the author's words, so looking for that text evidence, and then you're gonna tell me what you picture. You're not drawing a picture, I want you to use words. So I'm gonna just put words. Remember, we're going to use our words to describe the picture of the movie that's being made in our mind. What's the tone of the um, part of the story that we're reading? So remember, tone can be considered, is the text evidence that you're providing considered to be an angry way of describing something or a serious um, matter that they're maybe handling within their characters? Is the interactions our characters having playful or is the author providing an opportunity for our character to be optimistic? And then are you using any of your senses to help you better understand that text or where the story is taking place? So remember that author's words, that's, I'm gonna just write that on the side, this is gonna be considered our text evidence. And that's why you're being provided a digital copy of the story. So you can find the text evidence and I want you to come up with two, so I'm gonna put Number one and number two, we're gonna split this down through the middle so you have your teach page um, nice and organized. So this is gonna be your text evidence, what you visualize with the text evidence, what do you imagine the tone the author is taking on the subject matter, and then what senses did you um, use to invoke an understanding of the mood or the tone from the author? So we're gonna look at the first two pages together. So it says chapter one. That morning after he discovered the tiger, Rob went and stood under the Kentucky Star Motel sign and waited for the school bus just like it was any other day. 
The Kentucky star sign was composed of a yellow neon star that rose and fell over a piece of blue neon in the shape of the state of Kentucky. Rob liked the sign. He harbored a dim but abiding notion that it would bring him good luck. Finding the tiger had been luck. He knew that. He had been out in the woods behind the Kentucky Star Motel, way out in the woods, not really looking for anything, just wandering, hoping that maybe he would get lost or get eaten by a bear and not have to go to school ever again. That's when he saw the old Beauchamp gas station building all boarded up and tumbling down. Next to it, there was a cage. And inside the cage, unbelievably, there was a tiger, a real life tiger, very large tiger pacing back and forth. He was orange and gold and so bright. It was like staring at the sun itself, angry and trapped in a cage. It was early morning and it looked like it might rain. And it had been raining every day for almost two weeks. The sky was gray and the air was thick and still. Fog was hugging the ground. To Rob, it seemed as if the tiger was some magic trick rising out of the mist. He was so astounded at his discovery, so amazed that he stood and stared, but only for a minute. He was afraid to look at the tiger for too long, afraid that the tiger would disappear. He stared and then he turned and ran back into the woods toward the Kentucky Star. And the whole way home, while his brain doubted what he had seen, his heart beat out the truth to him. Tiger, tiger, tiger. That was what Rob thought about as he stood beneath the Kentucky Star sign and waited for the bus, the tiger. He did not think about the rash on his legs, the itchy red blisters that snaked their way into his shoes. His father said that it would be less likely to itch if he didn't think about it. So when we have read those two pages together, we're listening to Kate DeCamillo's words and how she's describing the setting. So it starts off with the description of this Kentucky Star Motel and how there is a bright neon um, sign on out front. It has a yellow neon star that rose and fell over a piece of blue in the shape of Kentucky. And that is something that we will refer back to um, quite a bit. I love the way that she describes how the tiger was orange and gold and so bright it was like staring at the sun itself, angry and trapped in a cage. So we're gonna use those, um, the words that she's using as our first text example. So we're going to write in quotation marks because this is text evidence. So this is Kate DeCamillo's words, not Mrs. Ling's words and not your words. So we have to give her credit by putting quotation marks. So we're gonna write, he was orange, and gold and so bright. It was like staring at the sun itself. Make sure that you're writing nice and small so you can tuck that in. And there is more to that sentence, but I like that description of him. So I put quotation marks at the beginning of that sentence, and then there's quotations at the end. Because it's not a full sentence in the text, I put dot, 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 just to let the reader know that there is more to Kate's words, but I'm just taking that section. So the first thing that we just did is we took the text evidence or the author's words. Now we're going to be filling in what does that picture look like in our heads based on her words? So when we talk about it, we're gonna talk about the movie or the picture being created. So we said we're using words to describe that. So I'm picturing the sun um, high up in the sky on a cloudless day. And that's just the picture that I envision when she describes he was orange and gold and so bright, it was like staring at the sun and stealth. Because when I think of a cloudless day and the sun high up in the sky, I know that the sun can be blinding and that it shines its light on everything that's around. So that's the picture that's being created in my mind. 
When I then move on to the tone, we go back to our um, definition. It says the tone is the author's feelings toward the subject. So when we think about Kate DiCamillo's um, tone or feelings about this tiger, when she describes him as that he was as bright as like staring at the sun itself, I picture that her tone is that she really adores um, this creature. So I'm gonna put adores this creature. She almost says it like she admires it. So I'm gonna put admires in parentheses just as a an extra level so she's describing them as being this bright spot in this otherwise misty and gloomy existence so for the author to be describing this character it gives me as the reader a lot of insight in how this character is going to be developed throughout the story when we move on to the five senses when we think back about the author's words we're thinking of the senses. So she's describing this um, with our sight. So we're gonna say, what would we see? So I'm picturing this because it's what I see. It's not describing um, the noises that the animal is um, making or um, the way the fur feels. They're describing the colors and the brightness. So when it says see, I'm going to put in uh, my parentheses, color slash brightness. So we were able to um, completely fill out one of your text evidence. You are going to read the remaining parts of chapters one through three, and you are expected to find at least one more piece of text evidence that Kate DiCamillo gives us that you then can tell me what is it that you picture in your mind when you read Kate DiCamillo's words or listen to her words. What is the tone or how does she feel about the subject or the character um, or whatever it is being described? And then what senses are you using to help you to either visualize or to um, be able to see what she's describing? So today you're going to be listening, filling this out. This is the first thing that you're going to take a picture to send me. Now moving on to our next part. This is something that we're going to be using throughout this entire novel study. So this is a packet that you need to keep in a safe place. I would suggest keeping it in your green, green resource folder. So when we're done, just tuck it back in. So anytime we're working and reading and we need it, you know where it is located. Today, you're going to start by writing your name in the, a novel study by, so Mrs. Ling's gonna write Mrs. Ling. You write your own name, remember, don't write mine. And then you're going to be able to decorate it. But in order to decorate it, there's something very specific I want you to do. So where I'm putting my sticky note, this is where you're going to draw a picture of a tiger. So I'm writing tiger. This is where you're gonna draw a picture. You can look up pictures with your parents' help um, from Google searching it, or you can um, look at the picture that I'm gonna post on the assignment of the front cover of the book. So this is your picture of a tiger, and then you can add more color around the frame or in the background, you can draw it as Kate DiCamillo has described it, where the, the tiger is the sun, like staring at the sun um, through the mist. So use that description to help you. Then when you open up your packet, you are going to see that we have quite a bit of work that we're gonna be working on during our independent working time. So we're going to look at the first few pages. The first page is called The Dictionary Detective, and you will see that it is going to be focusing on the first five chapters. Well, today in class, we're only reading chapters one through three, which means that you're not going to be finishing this work today, you're gonna to be finishing up tomorrow. So you're expected to start your work today. So we're gonna write, start working on pages, and we're going to number the pages. So we're gonna put this as page one. So that says page one. There are um, vocabulary words that you need to look up so you are able to understand the text which uses those. So it's saying to use a dictionary. You can use a dictionary, an actual book dictionary if you have one at home or there are lots of dictionaries um, online that you can ask your parent to help you um, to utilize. So you can start looking up some of your dictionary um, information. Then you're gonna turn the page the next page we're gonna put number two. 
This is going to be focusing on that vocabulary study. So you have different sections asking you to follow different directions. The first section says to match up, match the words in the left column, that's this left column, to their definition on the right. So when you are done with the definitions on the first page, you're gonna use that information to help you um, figure out which ones go to the right words. Then the second part is to fill in the blanks. So once again, using that same vocabulary words that you've been working on, filling in the blank with the correct word for the sentence that matches it. When you fill in the blank with words that are already provided, spelling counts, so make sure you look for the spelling. The bottom portion says a little extra. Describe a time you were astounded. So this is asking you to use a vocabulary word to answer a prompt. So it just needs to be a sentence or two to describe it. Then you have page three, which is understanding the story. So once you have um, listened to chapters one through three, come back over here to see which questions you can answer today and which ones you will have to wait till Thursday to answer um, because we're reading chapters four and five on Thursday during class. So you have multiple choice, questions number one and two. There is a short answer, which means that it's going to be a complete sentence. So remember, complete sentence means you have a capital, a punctuation mark, and it has a subject and predicate. You have a long answer, so this is at least three complete sentences for you to be able to actually respond to. So this short answer can be one to two sentences, and then the long answer has to be at least three or more. Then the last part on this page, it says Rob's mother taught Rob how to whittle. What is something that your parent or guardian has taught you? So this is um, drawing on your own schema and experiences. The last page that you will be working on today and Thursday for our classwork is page four. So number page four. This is a chapter summary. So reflecting back on the information that we had learned in those first five chapters of the story. So you have four questions and then fifth one is drawing a picture of something you think represents the first five chapters. So when you're done with that fourth page, remember you're going to go back and double check that you have completed everything for pages one through four. This is going to be completed on both Wednesday and Thursday because those are the days that we're gonna be listening to these chapters. And then you're going to take a picture of your front cover with your completed tiger picture, page one, page two and three, and page four to submit for your classwork. Remember that you are given work in your notebook to do with the modeling of the lesson and listening to the story, and then you have your additional packet practice. We will not be reading on Epic during this first part of this unit since we are working with a chapter book during the classwork part.